Hi everyone, it's me with my Viral Wisdom Day 40. I'm sorry I took a little time to sign in. I was having issues with the Facebook feed, as is my life these days. So as you sign in, let me know where you're from and how you're doing and what's your, your struggle. Share something about your process and I will be happy to try to address it. I know that many of us are going through so much, so there's a lot in our lives, and I wanna be here to, to help you navigate it as best as I can. It's not always easy to help a whole swath of people, but uh, my intention uh, with doing this course is to spread some wisdom, some other way of looking at things, and perhaps offer some respite. So, hi everyone, welcome. Hi Sarah from Portugal and Grana from Serbia. I have a few screens here, so don't mind if I keep shifting my gaze. So this is Viral Wisdom, day number 40. All my teachings are on my YouTube channel. If you sign up for my newsletter, you will receive my teachings and updates uh, from my newsletter. So make sure you go to my website drshefali.com and sign up for my newsletter. Hi, Melanie from London, feeling overwhelmed. Rita from Lebanon. Allison from New York, brokenhearted. Shalu from Mexico. Lara got news that a friend of mine has died suddenly, devastated. Yeah, so a lot of stuff happening in a lot of people's lives. I just had a session with someone before this, who began crying in the session. And he was so beautiful. He said to me, is this normal? Like, do you often see grown men like me crying? And I said, yes, I do. And he, he was kind of taken aback. He said, I'm so embarrassed, I'm crying. And he was talking about his issues and how he runs away from his, his feelings and I said, why are you running away? Like, what, what, do you, what, is, what is the feeling that you're running away from? And he said, it doesn't matter. Just the feeling is so unbearable. And then I said to him, well, it's very clear. I don't even need to ask you. You had a really effed up childhood. And then he began crying more. So here we are in this thing called life. All of us experiencing chaos, tumult, ebbs and flows. Life is never just easy peasy, is it? And on top of the unpredictability of life, as we're seeing in, the, in this pandemic, is our own childhood pain. The childhood pain of not feeling good enough, feeling scared to tell, as Jean says, my wife, tell her even no, right? He, he just shared that. We're scared of being our authentic selves. We're scared of the five most important people in our lives, their reactions. We're not scared that much about the stranger. We are. We want their approval. But it's the ones closest to us that we feel that we have to hide the real us from. Right? We're all in so much pain. We're all in so much vulnerability. But we can't share with each other. Like, this is the human condition. You know, you have to pay a therapist to go and be your real true self with. You have to pay a coach to heal you. When our own parents cannot heal us, when our loved ones cannot see us for who it is we are. So this is the human condition, yes? This is somehow this world that we have constructed. And the way that I've learned to reconstruct my world is to 100% learn to show up for myself. And I realized decades ago that if I don't show up for myself and if I don't parent myself, reparent myself and heal myself, I will forever be looking for this love on the outside, this validation on the outside, and I won't even receive it. But I'll be hungry for it, constantly looking for love on the outside. And if I had to write a song, if I've ever had, you know, a guitar in my hands and I had to strum up a song, the, the title would be, looking for love in all the wrong places. I know there's already a song like that, but this is the, the tragedy of our lives. We're looking for love 
in all the wrong places. And we keep barking up the wrong tree and looking for solace on the outside. So let's just cover the main areas of suffering. The biggest area of suffering, which Lara is going through right now, is death, okay? Which the pandemic has brought about in the most exaggerated way. Our fear of death is going to screw us up constantly, especially in pandemics, right? Because death is around the corner. So death needs to be understood, people. Yes, you will still cry. Yes, you will still have grief. Yes, you must go through your phases. Yes, it'll take years. Emotionally, death is unfathomably difficult to cope with. But I'm asking you to intellectually understand it's coming, okay? If we don't make peace with it, ultimately, it is going to drag us down. So each day I wake up and I know that I could die today is not being morbid or being so negativistic or pessimistic. It's being realistic. It's being brave. And then what it does to me when I realize today I could die, then what it does to me is it infuses me with a fervor to clean up my act today, to show up big today, to show up not big as in famous, as in all with bells and whistles, <laughs> no. To show up big as in to show up full, to show up real, to show up completely here. So this man who I had a session with, he asked me, he said, are you, are you always happy? And I said, no, why? He said, because when you smile, you look so happy. And I said, you know, maybe because I don't want to be happy. That's not my desire. My desire is not to want to be happy. So he said, so what do you want? What is your desire? And I said, if I had a desire... It is to be here now, to be present. And he wanted to know, what does that mean? And I say, well, so to show up, if I cry, I cry. If I am confused, I'm confused. If I'm scared, I'm scared. If I'm pissed off with you, I'm pissed off with you. You know, 100% trying to be authentic, not trying to have a shield between me and my experience. This is what understanding death does to me. And I'm offering it to you as a little token, maybe it will do this to you, to wake you up. I'm not preaching. I'm not asking you to do me. I'm just offering you what has helped me. When I understand that I could bloody die today, which the COVID has now put a fear up all our asses, <laughs> you could die today. You could die today. And I'm smiling. Doesn't mean I'm being irreverent, but I'm a little irreverent because death is a universal phenomenon. So because the pandemic has put this fear I'm asking you to please use this fear to electric, electrocute you into asking, if I could die today, how am I living today, right? And I'm not saying this in a like, let's be kumbaya and, you know, wow, be grateful. Yes, but I'm not saying it like be grateful. I'm saying be grateful, wake up, right? I'm not saying it like la-di-da. I'm saying, come on, we're here now. Are you present now? Are you living now? Are you going outside to smell air right now? Before you die, go do that. Before you die, love someone. Before you die, show up. So understanding death, which means understanding the impermanence of life, which means understanding the fragility of life, makes me very aware that I better not take things for granted that I better seize today, this moment. And I don't want to live it in some cloud of some persona that you should like me so I don't get to be me, that I need to serve you instead of myself. I'm not living my last day pleasing you or you or you or you. I'm going to live my last day fully here for me. Sounds selfish, but you know what I mean. Fully here. And when I'm fully here, then all the people in my life get my full attention. And I fully show up for them as me. And in doing that, I allow you and the people in my life to show up as you. So the more I take off my masks, 
the masks of wanting approval, the masks of wanting praise, the masks of wanting wealth and status and power. And I show up ready to greet my life in the here and now, the more I'm ready to embrace the present moment. So death doesn't make me depressed. Death infuses me, injects me, electrocutes me with a complete de desire to abandon the bullshit. Let go of all the crap and just show up. Just show up. Just show up. And, and in the showing up, I begin to be present. And in the being present, I am fully connected. So I told that client, I don't seek happiness. I seek to be connected. Did I have a connected day? Connected to whom? To me. Period. Connected to what? The present moment. Period. That's it. That's all. That's the only thing I need to do every single day is show up. Is show up. Is show up. If today all I did was help my daughter, that's what I did. If today all I did was help my client, that's what I did. If today all I did, like Lara may be doing because she's lost somebody dear, is cry my eyes out, that's what I did. Whatever the day brings, I show up for it. And I just go for that moment and that authenticity and that rawness. Now you say, that's no way to live. How do you plan for the future? You are planning for the future by showing up for the present. Because you're looking at today and going, okay, what bills do I need to pay today? What is the one thing I can do today? What is one plan I can execute and check off today? And by showing up moment by moment by moment and cleaning up the list, by showing up in the present, not allowing your feelings to pile up, not allowing your feelings to be suppressed, by being present day after day after day, you are creating your future. Because every day I ask myself, what gives me joy? So what gives me joy could be, oh, in 16 days or in 16 months, I want to be talking at conference X. Okay, now I work backwards. I can't go to conference X right now. I can't go to Serbia. I was going to be in Serbia last month. I can't go to Serbia right now, but I want to go to Serbia in 16 months. So what can I do to go to Serbia in 16 months? Oh, I'll tell you what, I work backwards into the present moment and I go, what part of what I was going to do in Serbia can give me joy right now? And that is talking to people. That's what I was going to do on the stage in Serbia. How can I do it right now? COVID style. Oh, I go on Facebook, I go on Instagram and I talk and I do the same thing that would give me joy in Serbia now. And maybe there's one Serbian here who will say, yeah, I see you, and I'm going to get the same joy. Do you understand what I'm saying? You take the vision for the future, you distill it backward, 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 and do the one thing that will give you joy in there. So on your vision board, right, law of attraction says, put the Bentley, put the island vacation. Okay, so you put it there, right? I'm showing you how the present moment is actually living in the future, okay? It's actually planning for the future. So, so say you put on, you'd like in your future to be on some island in some Bentley. Okay, you can't do it now because your COVID style locked up, handcuffed to your house. So now what do you do? You work backwards, okay? What would I be doing on the island vacation? Hmm, I'd be relaxing under the sun. Okay, the sun is outside, go relax. You understand? You bring the future into the present. Same thing. And this is how the present creates the future and the future is aligned to the present. Whatever dream you have for the future is in the present. It's right here, right now. You just don't know how to do it because you're caught up in the form, in the island, in the Bentley. Okay, what will the Bentley give you? Let's see, what does the Bentley give? Hmm, I really can't think of anything the Bentley gives, but you have it on your damn vision board. So let me see, what does the Bentley give? Somebody help me. What does the Bentley give? You know what I mean, the fancy car on your vision board. What does it give you? Some ego? Some wow factor from somebody else? Well, I don't know. Call your friend up and say, look at me, say wow. I don't know because it's so cheap and so full of ego. I don't even know what a Bentley can give somebody. But people have it on their vision board. Maybe the idea of transportation. No, it doesn't give just transportation. Okay, if it gives just transportation, take your legs and transport yourself. Take your car and go for a drive. No, it gives you ego. It's the wow factor from other people. 
Well, COVID has taken that out. It gives you a feeling of success. How tragic if a Bentley gives you a feeling of success. Okay, let's go with that. Bring it back into the present moment. I, okay, I don't have the Bentley. I'm stuck in my house. What will give me a feeling of success? I don't know. Dress up for your friends. Show them your fancy watch. You know, bring it into the present. So there is no future without the present. There is no present without the future. It's all one. Yes. So when I think of death, this is what it does for me. Right. So how to show up for our lives, how to show up in the X factor of life, how to show up in the moment and take care of the present moment fully, completely. Right now, you're stuck in this house. Right now, you have children who are up to no good. Right now, you have a partner who's driving you up the wall, perhaps. How to show up? How to show up? How to go? This is what I've created, co-created. How do I show up and meet this reality in the present moment? If I have to cry, let me cry present. If I have to be upset, let me be upset present. If I have to be sad, let me be sad present. How can I be present? Because trust me, you want to die, if you can, present. You want to be there. You want to try to catch the moment when you go from this to that. It's been talked about. It's the moment of the final reckoning. But no one knows what the hell that moment is because I can guarantee you no one was present. So the Buddhists say that the greatest gift you can give yourself is to be present at the moment of your death. But they're very cunning, these Buddhists, because they'll throw this out there and you'll be like, wow, to be present at the moment of your death. Can't do that. Forget it. What they really mean is that you can't be present at the moment of your death if you're not present in the moment of your present. You know, so what they're really saying is all roads lead back to the present moment. How to show up now, how to live this life in the now, not in the now what, because that's tomorrow. In the now, now. This is all we have, guys, is the now. So if your now sucks because you lost someone, don't look at it like that. Just look at it. It's my now. Now my now for the next 1,000 nows is going to be crying. My dear friend has lost her father. I'm sure she'll listen to this talk one day. Um, so she just lost her father in India. She cannot visit India, right? Now her now... And her 1,000 next nows are going to perhaps be full of some remorse that I could not be with my father in the way I wanted. Her next 1,000 nows are going to be full of tears, right? My next 1,000 nows are going to be thinking of her next 1,000 nows crying, right? And I'm going to be sad. I've accepted it. Now we're in the new place. We're here. I'm here. I'm here paying vigil to my friend who's paying vigil to her feelings, paying vigil to her mother who lost her husband. We're all paying vigil. But instead of looking at it like, oh, we're all paying vigil, we understand that life is always about paying vigil. To what? What's showing up in the present. If your kid is having a tantrum of a tantrum, the mother of all tantrums, the way to live in the present is to go, okay, I'm paying vigil. I'm here now. We're having a shit show. I'm in my shit show. I'm here. How to be present. How to show up. No resistance, right? Now say you're having a, a moment of like, I don't like my husband anymore. I don't like my wife anymore. Pay vigil. You don't have to do a thing. You have to watch it. Be in it. Be present. Most of us only want to react. We only want to run. We only want to hide. Why? Because we want to chase happiness. We want happiness. We don't want to go, I have to experience death. So when you experience death, the first thing people will do is they will condole. My condolences, right? Now I'm not saying don't condole, but I'm going deeper here. The reason we condole is because there's something to condole. And I'm saying to go beyond that, to go, let's not condole. Let's, let's just be in the experience of the new experience, right? Don't even call it condolences don't even call it sadness don't call it happiness it just is now we're in the isness of the next 1000 moments of this right of course condole you know what i mean on the colloquial level we condole but on the deeper level the deep 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 level we're just in the now in the now 
Now we're in the now. This now kills my heart. That now makes me laugh. This now makes me have to have patience. This now is breaking my brain because I'm trying to make a chocolate cake. This now, da da da. This, you understand? Don't call it anything because when you call it, you resist or you want it. Resist or you want it. Don't want the happiness, don't call it sadness. Of course, in the colloquial language, we have to call it something. Even I'm going to call it something. But it's about honoring whatever shows up, honoring the present moment. Ah, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. You understand? It's going, ah, yeah. Because half the problem is because we are calling it something and resisting something. That is half the problem, right? And the minute we call it something, we're like, oh, it's so sad, right? Now we're in grief. Now we must be feeling this way. It's just the new moment. And accepting death, which is the final frontier, then you work backwards and you begin to accept life, right? If you don't accept death, you're going to resist all that shows up in life. So I'm going to take a moment, guys, and just see if people can see me in Instagram. Okay. So the, the key wisdom here for today is how to show up in your life as it is, embracing of it all, the hardest being death, right? That's the final one that we, are, we have the hardest time embracing because to embrace death, is the unimaginable task, is the task that seems only for the wise, only for the monks who are so detached. But if we can see life and death as literally occurring side by side at all times, then the final death, the death of the final body will be understood better. If you can see that you're dying right now, you know in biology you've learned your 50 trillion cells, you're 50 trillion, you're 50 trillion of them. They are a community that don't live forever. Your skin literally changes over every, I don't know, four weeks, four months, your red blood cells, your white blood cells, you can look it up. Literally, they're changing over. You don't see it because it's subtle. It is occurring on the deep, subtle, nuanced level. Just like you don't see the earth moving. You don't see the earth moving. You know it intellectually because you see the sun and the moon. But you don't see the earth is shifting every single millisecond. You don't feel it because it's so subtle. And because we don't live life on the subtle, the final death of the form comes as a tragedy. The Buddha taught to see life on the subtle moment by moment by moment, by moment. Because when you see life, moment, by moment, by moment, by moment, when you, when you live life like that, death is every freaking where. Death is everywhere, guys. And I know this, this is harsh, but I need you to, to at least hear me from just from your intellect. I know it can't go into your heart, it's difficult. But if you do, you know what happens? You begin living big, showing up fully, because you understand that death is happening anyway. So the only thing that is living is your ego. Your soul is dying all the time. Your so-called spirit, your essence is always dying because essence is always eternally, constantly transforming. Death, the final death of the physical is only one more transformation of your essence. Your ego thinks it's living. The ego thinks I'm stationary. The ego thinks the earth, the sun, the moon. The ego doesn't realize it's always dying. But the ego gives you this idea that we're stable, we're stationary. You are, I am. This is the illusion. This is the fundamental reason we suffer because your ego cannot die. But if you kill your ego, which means to live moment by moment by moment, no, no attachment, Right? So before I came on this talk, I told my assistant Greta, I was like, can you please tell me what to talk about today? This was like two minutes before coming on. I'm like, I have no idea. And she knows me very well. She was like, you know, you're going to 
figure it out in the moment. And I said, I will. It's in the moment. Living life like this is a fully connected life. It's only doing what shows up fully authentically. Yes, I can plan. I had to plan the phones. I had to plan the Zoom. I had to plan the time. But I cannot plan more than what I can plan, right? So we can try to take our vitamins and we try to go on a run and we try to stay indoors. We wear our masks. We do all the check, 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 check. But what I'm talking about is the surrender that ultimately, ultimately, guys, none of this matters because none of it is in our control. So as you're trying to control your house, keep it clean. And as you're trying to control your children and make them do their distance learning and fill out their applications for college, do it. Like I'm saying, wear the mask. Yes. Stay indoors. Yes. That's on one level. But the ultimate reality is that none of it matters because none of it matters. You will die anyway. So all this stress around your children, especially like do it, do your SATs, go to college, do well, do it but not with all this hype. It doesn't matter. Your kid will be your kid, will be your kid, will be your kid. Tomorrow there will still be dishes in your sink. Your hair will still turn white. No matter what, you're still going to grow old. And no matter what, you're still going to die. So can you do all of this with that perspective, which means take it lightly, take it with ease, laugh a whole lot at your, your ego's this desire to be stable, this is all your ego because the wise one knows that all of this is a Lila, is a divine play. It's a game, right? The ego wanting significance and the ego wanting the house and the ego saving a lot of money. <laughs> the ego thinks it's going to live forever. You know, that's why we do it. And you'd be like, but that's life. We have to. We have to on one level. But the level of wisdom, the true level, is understanding all of this is just a game trying to control life. And life is freaking uncontrollable. Life is out of control. You can eat your kale and your raw juice and you're there and you get a freaking kidney stone because of the kale. You know, and you can try really hard to love your partner and look sexy and wear the lingerie and the ass will still go and have an affair. And you're like, huh? And you can try to teach your children to brush their teeth and say please and thank you and be a good person. And at 25, like my client today, he said he never touched drugs. He was such a good kid. 25, somebody gave him one Percocet. He became a drug addict. All to say, you can try. Please try. But try with the wisdom that you cannot try to control life. You can try to fake control. I'm pretending I can control. Try, try, try. Teach your kids to brush their teeth. Teach the kids, don't do drugs. Teach, of course. But don't do it under the illusion that you're controlling anything. You have no control. And that's what I teach, really. <laughs> and you tune in to, her, to for me to tell you, you have no control. You know, I don't know why people keep tuning in. I'm giving the worst news possible. I'm saying, do, do, do. But still, the wrinkles are coming, the white hair is coming, and death is coming. I say this to infuse your life with joy. I know it's counterintuitive, but this is how I infuse my life with joy. How do you infuse your life with joy, Shefali? Well, I wake up and I think, this could be my last freaking day on earth. Really? That's, that's what gives you joy? Yes, it does. Because when I think of death and I understand it on a wisdom level, I go, what the hell am I complaining about? What the hell am I unhappy about that somebody told me I'm fat, stupid or ugly? Who gives a shit? I could die tomorrow. So it infuses me with a, a perspective. It just wakes me up and it goes, hey, wake up, live your life now. Stop waiting for permission. Stop giving power away. Stop pretending that the Bentley is going to make you happy because you're here now stuck in COVID style in this freaking house. So be happy now. Be joyful now. Be alive now. Stop. There's no tomorrow. Hasn't COVID taught you anything, Shifali? There is no tomorrow. And then I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got the lesson. COVID, you have taught me there is no tomorrow. So this is why I'm here every day to remind you there's no tomorrow. 
only now. There is no such thing called the future. If there's one thing really <laughs> that COVID has 100% taught me, that this bullshit about future got to stop. I got to stop living in the future. You know, and I say this story, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. For my entire daughter's academic career, because I'm a conscious parent, I had promised myself to only go apeshit crazy in 11th grade. 11th grade, I was going to drive my daughter crazy and I told her, I'll be good in 8th, I'll be slightly crazy in 9th, I'll be slightly more crazy in 10th, but in 11th grade, Maya, I'm going to go crazy. My way of saying, this sweet conscious parent, she's gone, I'm going to join mainstream, I'm going to join the army of the other mothers and I'm going to drive you crazy with your SATs and your application and you know it's a serious year and we gotta be serious, Maya, and all this conscious parenting out the window. We gotta get with mainstream in 11th grade. My daughter's in 11th grade, okay? I was waiting for 11th grade. 11th grade was the year I could stop being conscious and just be like every other mother and go to town. I found her SAT tutor, I enrolled her. I was like, yeah, now we have to hurry up and catch up to mainstream because I have ru I've ruined your life till now. So now, and guess what happened? It's the most fabulous thing. Her freaking SATs got canceled. Like never before in history has this happened. She may never go to college. I mean, which is a, a very frightening thought, frankly. I have to say, I'm not that loving a mother. I was so on the time clock of like, this has to have an expiration date, okay? I can do this only so long, this conscious parenting stuff. And I was appalled that the money I wasted on her SAT tutor, hundreds of thousands of dollars, not hundreds of thousands, hundreds of hundreds of dollars, and what, there's no SAT? So my ego couldn't take it. I was like, no, there is an SAT. So the first time it got canceled, I said, don't worry. Let me enroll you again. And the college board or whatever this board is, they took the money. Second time too, only $90, but they took it from 90 million people, must be like me, wanting to pay for the SAT. Please, can we do the SAT? So my daughter told me, mom, don't waste your $90 because they're going to cancel. And I said, just in case they don't cancel, then we will lose our seat because I wasn't listening to COVID. No, I was listening to my ego. My ego was like, sign her up. So she's like, okay, I'm just telling you, I wouldn't do it if I was you. And I said, you're not me. You're not wise like me. I'm your parent. I'm going to do it. So I signed her up for the SAT. In two weeks, they canceled it. And my daughter was like, mom, I told you. And I was like, what? No SATs? Like, what? This is your future. And she said, Mom, now I'm taking charge. I'm not doing them. I'm not studying. I will only study 30 days before I know for sure we are going to have an SAT. And I had to release it. And I realized, wow, the one future that I was going to plan for was her SATs. The one future was her 11th grade college application. I was waiting for this, because I don't allow myself to plan. This, I wanted to plan. And even this, I'm not able to plan. So the COVID, the COVID has taught me, there is no, 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 no future. So now when I open my mouth and the words, what about, we have to, we need to, we, our application, college, all those words, I watch them come out and I pick them back up and I swallow them and put them and get indigestion because they are words filled with, with rotten fruit. They're rotten. The future was a rotten promise. There is no future, people. No future. It's only now to the next now to the next now, to the next now. So this is how I stay really in the moment and I stay really joyful and full and showing up is to realize there's death is around the corner, which means there is no future, which means the only thing I have control over, at, if at all, is me in the now. Me in the now. So that's it. You know, our kids have no future the way we thought they had a future. The future we thought our kids would have 
and the future we thought we would have is not there. It's like literally taken from us. We may never, ever go back to what it was. We may have to create a whole new future. So this realization has taught me not to waste time constructing a future because all the time I wasted constructing this moment has been taken away from me. There is no college application. There is no SAT. There is no 11th grade. It has been completely transformed. So the next time I plan, my next 10 years as a businesswoman and my next 10 years as a human is useless. So what can I do in this futility? Not be apathetic, not be listless, not be, you know, depressed to go, what can I do now? Not the now what, because that's tomorrow. In the now. So in the now, 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 now. So take your vision board, bring it into the present and start executing now because chances are, my people, you'll never go to another island again. So you have to bring the island here. Okay, start living now. And let me tell you, when you start living now, you realize there's a lot to live for in the now. As it stands, no friends, no Prada shoes, no good looks, no disco, no bar, no theater, no game to go to, just you and this present moment. Talk about simplicity, talk about quietude, talk about paring down, talk about letting go of excess and waste and extra ego. Talk about letting it all go and coming back to the present moment. It's all we have. It's all we always had. But now, 100% raw, brutal, unadorned, unadulterated, only here now. So learn to live in the only here now. And you know who's here in the only here now? Only you. The other person exists in your projection. They don't exist. They only exist in your projection. So you get to choose how they exist in your projection. So all that is, is you. You get to decide how you are right here, right now. Only you can do it for yourself. I'm just here to push you, to remind you, to jolt you, to go, hey, you're alive right now. Show up, be here. Whatever you're feeling, feel it, connect. Be present, be alive, be awake. Don't be a zombie to your present moment. So I've said this before, but I'm going to say this again. I teach meditation. I'm supposed to be teaching there in five minutes, but I'm always late. So if you want to come meditate with me, I'll teach you more about how to live in the present moment. The Facebook group, you have to take a pen and write it down. So take a pen because then I'll get 10,000 emails. What was the Facebook group? It's www dot facebook.com facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash get super powered one more forward slash okay facebook.com forward slash groups groups with an s forward slash get super powered another forward slash come and meditate with me because meditation is the only way to live in the present moment so come, I teach for free. You have nothing to lose. Keep me in the background. And maybe something will click and maybe you'll meditate for a few minutes. You have nothing to lose. Totally free. Come, join me. Okay, guys, hope to see you there. I put off Instagram and now I put off Facebook. Bye, Facebook. See me in the other group. Bye, guys.